Welcome to the reading of God's precious word, the word that when it was spoken was documented forever. It won't change. It is a foundation we can stand on. That's why we're here, to learn his word. By learning his word, we learn who God is, how he thinks, how he maneuvers, what kind of decisions does he do? What are his ways? You see, <clears throat> we need to make him our personal God. And good morning to my precious Miss Sharon and Connie. I have a little song this morning. It's really inspired by God. And it's a hymn out of the uh, Episcopal hymnal. Uh, it's under the National Days section. I'm going to tell you because I hope a lot of you track this hymn down. <clears throat> in the in the hymnal, it's 145. And just listen to these words. If these aren't the most timely words for us in America today, I don't know what. Not alone for mighty empire stretching far o'er land and sea. Not alone for bounteous harvest Lift we up our hearts to Thee. Standing in the living present, memory and hope between. Lord, we would with deep thanksgiving praise Thee most for things unseen. Not for battleship and fortress, not for conquest of the sword, but for the conquest of the Spirit, give we thanks to Thee, O Lord. For the heritage of freedom, for the home, the church, the school for the open door to manhood in a land the people rule <clears throat> for the armies of the faithful souls that passed and left no name for the glory that illumines Patriot lives of deathless fame. For our prophets and apostles, loyal to the living word. For all heroes of the Spirit, give we thanks to thee, O Lord. <clears throat> God of justice, save the people from the clash of race and creed. <clears throat> from the strife of class and faction, make our nation free indeed. <clears throat> Keep her faith in simple manhood, strong as when her life began, till it finds its full fruition in the brotherhood of man. And to that powerful written word by George Henry Day in 1940. So you know what the country was pretty much like now in 1940. <clears throat> I mean, they could see there was another war starting to loom and they dreaded it. They'd just been through the terrible first war. So to all of that, I sing, Amen, which means, so be it. Save the people for freedom, for the people rule. And it all ties in with Divrei Hayamin, First Chronicles chapter 26, picking up with verse 12, 
which is where we happen to be at the moment. <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I was thinking about it, and I said, what more can I tell everybody <clears throat> so they don't tune out with your attention and your brains over the names and Jane's pronunciation, trying to do it? I mean, a good Jew is probably laughing his head off to hear me. <laughs> and he said... The importance is everyone <clears throat> knew his job. No one was lazy or left behind. And furthermore, the job was not delegated by a leader, by a man. It was done by lot. Everyone knew that God spoke. They drew a lot believing that God would put everybody where he wanted them. And then the important thing that we're doing, it was documented, written down. So you couldn't say five years later, oh no, I was supposed to be, oh no, you weren't. It's documented. What God spoke from the lot. So it brought order, it brought strength, it brought unity. Everyone knew his place, his position. That eliminated all of that striving to get your job. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> the idea was to do your job at excellent performance. Okay? Order, strength, unity. You see, if the temple was strong, it was the foundation bed now <clears throat> that all the other people, the common people, were going to look to. They were going to come they were going to pray. They were going to have their festivals. Do you get this picture? I mean, I knew all that, but it was like Holy Spirit just wrote it out in marker pen. All right. Divrei Hayamin, chapter 26, picking up with 12. Among these were the divisions of the gatekeepers, among the chief men having duties just like their brethren to serve in the house of the Lord. See, that's the point. It wasn't just a job. You were serving the Lord. When we stand up for freedom, fight, even give our lives, we are serving righteousness that comes from the Lord. And they cast lots for each gate, the small as well as the great, according to their father's house. <clears throat> you, could, you see, they couldn't say, well, yes, but my house is more important or whatever. No, everybody followed what happened with the lot. The lot for the east gate fell. It fell, okay, to Shelemiah. And then they cast lots for his son, Zachariah, a wise counselor. And his lot came out for the north gate to Obed-Edom, the south gate, and to his sons, the storehouse. To Shupim and Hosa, the lot came out for the west gate, with the Shalitech gate on the ascending highway, watchman opposite watchman. You see the unity tied together? On the east were six Levites, on the north, four each day, on the south, four each day, and for the storehouse, two by two. As for the parbar on the west, there were four on the highway and two at the parbar. <clears throat> you can look that up, P-A-R-B-A-R. -A -R. <clears throat> These were the divisions of the gatekeepers among the sons of Korah and among the sons of Merai. Of the Levites, Ahiah was over the treasuries of the house of God and over the treasuries of the dedicated things. The sons of Ladan, the descendants of the Gershonites of Ladan, heads of their father's houses, of Ladan, the Gershonite, Yeheli, the sons of Yeheli, Zetam, and Yoel, his brother, were over the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Of the Amramites, the Isharites, 
the Hebronites and the Usielites, Shebiel, the son of Gershom, the son of Moshe, Moses, was overseer of the treasuries. Maybe it was, Moses. I don't know the timing of the years, okay? <clears throat> and his brethren by Eleazar were Rahabia, his son, Yeshahia, his son, Yoram, his son, Zikri, his son, and Shelomit, his son. This Shelomit and his brethren were over all the treasuries of the dedicated things which King David, David, and the heads of fathers' houses, the captains over thousands and hundreds, and the captains of the army had dedicated. <clears throat> you see, we're, <clears throat> we are talking that this system set up thousands, okay, thousands. Some of the spoils won in battles, they dedicated to maintain the house of the Lord. All that Shamuel, the seer, Shaul, the son of Kish, Abner, the son of Ner, and Joab, the son of Zeruiah, had dedicated. Every dedicated thing was under the hand of Shelomit and his brethren. Over the Itzharites, Chaniah and his sons performed duties as officials and judges over Israel outside Jerusalem. Of the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his brethren, 1,700 able men had the oversight of Israel on the west side of the Jordan for all the business of the Lord and in the service of the king. Among the Hebronites, Yeriach was head of the Hebronites according to his genealogy of the fathers. In the 40th year of the reign of David, they were sought, and there were found among them capable men. You see, capable men. They, God just caused the lot to line up who was the most capable. Capable men at Yeser of Gilead, and his brethren, brethren were two 1,700 able men, heads of fathers' houses. See, if they'd been head of a house for a long time, it, there was already training in authority, dealing with problems. They didn't come knowing any, uh, you know, nothing. God had a, a school he'd been putting everybody through that they didn't know that this is where it was going to lead whom King David made officials over the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh for every matter pertaining to God and the affairs of the king. Oh, Connie's got on there. Parbar, a place apparently connected with the temple, a space between the temple wall and the wall of the court. And you can read the rest of what she said. We move right along. Thank you, Connie. <clears throat> We move right along to chapter 27. And the children of Israel, according to their number, the heads of fathers' heads, the captains of thousands and hundreds in their, and their officers, served the king in every matter of the military divisions. These divisions came in and went out month by month. You served a month and then went home till your month came up again. <clears throat> How wonderful is that? You didn't serve until you were exhausted or had something to complain about. It kept freshness. I just, I see that month by month throughout all the months of the year, each division having 24,000. And now we're going to read the documentation. So, so don't get bored of the repetition of having 24,000. That is a blessed number. Think about it. 12, twice. <clears throat> Trying to keep this voice in order today. 
And the children of Israel, according to their number, the heads of fathers' houses, the captains of thousands and hundreds, and their officers, served the king in every matter of the military divisions. These divisions came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year, each division having 24,000. Over the first division for the first month was Yashabim, the son of, Z of Zabdiel. And in his division were 24,000. He was of the children of Perez and the chief of all the captains of the army for the first month. Over the division of the second month was Dodi and Ahohite. And of his division, Mikrot also was the leader. In his division were 24,000. The third captain of the army for the third month was Beniach, the son of Jehoiada the priest, who was chief. In his division were 24,000. This was the Beniach, who was mighty among the 30 and was over the 30. In his division was Amazabad, his son. The fourth captain for the fourth month was Asahel, the brother of Joab, and Zebediah, his son, after him. In his division were 24,000. The fifth captain of the fifth month was Shomhat, the Esrahite. In his division were 24,000. The sixth captain for the sixth month was Era, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite. In his division were 24,000. The seventh captain for the seventh month was Helez, the Pelanite of the children of Ephraim. In his division were 24,000. <clears> See, it was equal. Nobody could say, well, my division only has such and such, and yours has. No, no. All of that was ironed out in how it started. It started with wisdom. The eighth captain for the eighth month was Sibaki, the Hushaite of the Zarhites. In his division were 24,000. The ninth captain for the ninth month was Abizar, the Anathothite of the Benhamites. In his division were 32,000. Oh no! Did I catch you? Oh no! 24,000. The 10th captain for the 10th month was Mahari, the Neptophahite of the Zarhites. In his division were 24,000. See, the accuracy is written down. They don't, uh, we, we aren't worried with repetition. We're, what we're documenting is accuracy. The 11th captain for the 11th month was Beniach the Pirathonite of the children of Ephraim. In his division were 24,000. The 12th captain for the 12th month was Heldai, the Nephtophahite of Othniel. In his division were 24,000. Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, the officer of the Reubenites was Eleazar, the son of Zikri, over the Shemanites, Shepatiah, the son of Macha, over the Levites, Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel, over the Aaronites, Zedak, over Judah, Elihu, one of David's brothers, over Issachar, Omri, the son of Mishael, over Zebulun, Ishmaiah, the son of Obadiah, over Nephtali, Yeramoth, the son of Asriel, over the children of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Azaziah, over the half-tribe of Manasseh, Yoel, the son of Pediah, over the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Edo, the son of Zechariah, over Benjamin, Yasiel, the son of Abner, 
over Dan, as Azarel, the son of Yerohim. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. <clears throat> but David did not take the number of those 20-year-olds and under, because the Lord had said he would multiply Israel like the stars of the heavens. <clears throat> See, they already had the word of the Lord about numbering the people. He was in charge of how many births, how many pregnancies. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, began a census, but he did not finish, for wrath came upon Israel because of this census nor was the number recorded in the account of the Chronicles of King David. And Asmapheth, the son of Adiel, was over the king's treasuries. And Yohanatan, the son of Usiah, was over the storehouses in the field, <clears throat> in the cities, in the villages, and in the fortresses. Esri, the son of Chelub, was over those who did the work of the field for tilling the ground. And Shemei, the Ramathite, was over the vineyards. And Zabdi, the Shiptmite, was over the produce of the vineyards <clears throat> for the supply of wine. You see, it wasn't like sometimes in a family, listen, uh, <clears throat> son, I want you to go out and, and haul around this. Oh, dad, I did it yesterday. It's really, no, there was none of that. There was none of that. It was assigned. We weren't going to have failing crops for neglect of taking care of them. No. No, everything was in order. He was over the produce of the vineyards for the supply of wine. Baal Hanan the Gadarite was over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the lowlands, and Yoash <coughs> was over the store of oil. And Shitra, the Sharonite, was over the herds that fed in Sharon. And Shapat, the son of Adi, was over the herds that were in the valleys. Obil, the Ishmaelite, was over the camels. Yediach, the Maronathite, was over the donkeys. And Yaziz, the Hagrite, was over the flocks. All these were the officials over King David's property. Also, Yehonatan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man, and a scribe. And Yahiel, the son of Hachmoni, was with the king's sons. Ahidophel was the king's counselor. And Hushai, the archite, was the king's companion. After Ahidophel was Yehoiada, the son of Beniach, and then Abiathar. And the general of the king's army was Joab. Yoab. <clears throat> oh, I don't know about you, but for me then, with all of that little extra from the Holy Ghost, this was a joy for me to read. And it is how we ought to be thinking and praying that needs to happen for America. All of we sheep are going, oh my goodness, look what's happening. What, what can I do? What can I do? And so we're sitting home doing nothing. We say we're praying, and we are. But we should be praying also doing something. It's time to rise up and volunteer and do and find out what is happening and stand up as an honest person directed by the Holy Ghost. It's time for the church to awake and get busy <clears throat> saving this great nation. All right. We move right along to Romans chapter 4, picking up with verse 13. And oh, 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 Paul is spending some time here really explaining faith. 
for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are errors, H-E-I-R-S, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath. You see, the law reveals the sin. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. If there's no law, it's called, we all do what we want to do. And it's sin, because <laughs> we're not, we're following ourselves. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace. Grace, so that the promise might be sure to all seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, Avraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. These are two very old people beyond the normal age of childbearing. And Abraham's going, uh, make love to Sarah? Woo! I'm dependent on you, Lord, right? And he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, that because of that, because of that, not wavering, not in unbelief, it was accounted to him for righteousness. It was accounted to him for righteousness after it was spoken before it really happened. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses. He was delivered up because of my offenses, your offenses, and was raised because of our justification. Oh, those are shouting words. And we move right along to chapter 5 of Romans. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Oh, we do? Yeah, we're supposed to. Let's get it together. We rejoice in the glory in tribulations, knowing, and here's the list. Here's what tribulation, it's like building something 
Each thing that happens causes something wonderful to happen in you. And this is the word of God. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, doesn't it? I mean, you want the answer right now. And it goes on and on and on. And, and it, it produces perseverance. You say, I'm not giving up no matter what. And perseverance, character. It builds you strong in your character. And character, hope. Hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Walk in the Holy Spirit and he's going to keep pouring out the love of God within you and me. Oh, what a great reading. What a revelation. Thank you, precious Father, for this word. We move right along to Psalm 14. We are on our second time to read the Psalms. And another Psalm of David given to the musician. The fool. Now get ready. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's the one you speak up to. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. You look at the life of all the fools that you know. It's just a mess. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Man, I hate to have that said about me. I don't want to be in that group, do you? Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? who eat up my people as they eat bread. Oh, check out Kathy's graphics. I mean, Kathy, the graphics are great. She's got this picture of this idiot sitting there eating bread. It's a great graphic. Who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call on the Lord? Question mark. There they are in great fear, for God is is with the generation of the righteous. You shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. You see, the poor are trusting the Lord. <clears throat> oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people. And we are watching that. That is a live sentence for you and me today. That's exactly what he's doing. The Lord is building Jerusalem. The Lord is building Jerusalem. He's gathering the people. He's gathering the people. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Oh, what a powerful psalm. I love it. All right, we wrap up today, y'all. Ooh, I'm doing pretty good on time for all the extra words I've given you. We wrap it up with Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, verse 17. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord. You just, we got to get over just saying, ah, oh, those poor people. No, it's time to give 
and help bring them out of being poor. Give. Give till it hurts. Give till you don't have that extra tank of gas. You have to just kind of be careful and stay home a little more because you gave it to help the poor. And where are we talking? Cuba? Haiti? Africa? Well, anywhere. Anywhere that there's such a great need and the Holy Spirit knocks on your heart. Do not ignore that knocking because all that you sow in money, he will give back. And he will add to it. Trust him. He does in ways you can't even believe. You can't even believe. And he will pay back. You see, there it is. And he will pay back for what he has given. You know, I'll give a little testimony on that proverb. One time I had, the, the whole trip was planned, and, and I was going by myself that time to Kenya. Whole trip was planned. Got to be the morning of leaving. I didn't have the money. And I got to where I was thinking, well, <clears throat> as I get in line to check in, maybe it's somebody standing in the line. I've heard of that kind of a testimony before. And so I've got my purse. I'm bag. I'm, I'm ready to go out the door. Sam's ready to drive me over to the airport. Car pulls in. Very good friend of mine walks up the aisle or the sidewalk taking his time we i greeted greeted him it was a man we talked a minute and i'm kind of going i gotta get to the airport i've waited as long as i could for a phone to ring or something and now i've i've been here long enough to that i've been here for him to come and i'm getting kind of nervous because time is slipping away and so I, I very politely said, you know, um, I, I ha thank you for these prayers. And I, I have to, I really have to leave. I don't want to be late for the plane. Oh, 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 no. Reaches in his pocket, hands me this envelope. Listen, be blessed. Oh, thank you so much. Big hug, big kiss. Away he goes. So we can back out the driveway, get in the car. I open up the envelope. And I can't tell you anymore what was in it. This was a number of years ago. But it was enough. I went to the airport. You think I didn't have faith in God? You see, out of that tribulation came the perseverance. I mean, that whole list we just read. That's what happened. That's what happened. I got on that plane in much better shape to go out of the country and have faith for a very poor, oppressed, sick people. And I had something to do, something about it. Whew. I'm sure you could give many testimonies. All right, let's wrap it up with prayer. Let's wrap it up with prayer. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Father God, we want to thank you for this wonderful wonderful portions of scripture that you've given us today wow not only are they amazing to read but they are amazing that they absolutely illumine and give us hope and faith and hopefully action to say i've got to do more than i'm doing what can i do that's really a step out of my realm Oh, thank you, Father. You are awakening your church, your people, to be able to say, I gave my life to Jesus, and I must be brave if what I do even causes me to lose my life. I will only gain heaven. And so, Father God, I come against all fear. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I bind the fear spirit of fear, of complacency, of routine. I come against those and I say, stir us up, Lord. Stir us up. If we miss this opportunity, we will pay a terrible penalty. Father God, stir us up. And Lord, we right away pray for Israel 
in Yerushalayim. We pray for her peace. Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim. Ah, my dear friend Zola Levitt said that in every program. And it is he that I went with on my first trip in 1992 to Israel. Oh, thank you for that, Lord. Those words are embedded in my spirit. Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim. And we pray for her peace, this precious city of yours. Yes, we pray peace, the peace of the Lord that no one can stop. And the peace that produces true peace, true security, true bravery, living on the border and continuing to work on the crops, even though they're at a threat of being burned up by the enemy across the border. Father God, keep them going and pursuing. Bring those, Lord. Don't let anybody in any country be afraid to get on the plane and not trust that you will take care of them. Most of them are bringing nothing. They're just coming. They don't know where they're going to stay or eat or they don't know anything. Lord, please stir up that kind of faith in all of us today. And Father God, Father God, I hold up America. I hold up this present bunch, bunch. And I'd ask, Lord, that your hand would come mightily upon all in authority or all who think they are. Lord, come upon all those that are in authority that got there by a crooked way. Lord, we'd ask that you, and we're depending on you, you're the only one. You're the only one. And so we trust you, knowing that you are well capable. You have a plan. You, you aren't the least bit concerned or worried. Lord, precious Father God in heaven, and your precious Son, Jesus, at your right hand, having come home victorious, Lord, we are trusting you. And we are calling out on you. And many sons and daughters are calling out specifics. And that's good. Precious God, we see your hand moving because you are revealing and revealing. You are revealing to those that didn't want to believe anything was wrong. You are revealing what has been really happening. And some of it is so shocking, so disgusting. I'll leave it right there. We know, Lord, you know more than we do. You know the true story. And so we trust you. We trust you with every prayer today, Lord. Prayers for friends, relatives, prayers for healing, prayers for salvation, prayers for deliverance, particularly young people caught in drugs, caught in bad things that they've done to try to get money, to get more. Father, we trust you with the border of America. Let every one of those who are evil crossing the border right now with slipping through, let them really have come to be born again, to come to know you, that powerful anointed people will be brought to their face and have anointing to convict their hearts that they might be born again and not do crime and destruction. Father God, we're going to believe the best for every person. And all of God's people cried a hearty amen and continued on reading the word, bringing your prayers, have a great day in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I love you so. Bye-bye.